Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Magda and today we're going to talk about what I love and hate about Italian university. So let's get started. I graduated from my university in July, so quite a lot, quite a few months ago already. I still haven't picked up my diploma. However, doesn't matter. I'm going to share with you today how is my experience with Italian university. Obviously, it's very generalized. It's mostly connected to my university. I was studying in Federico II in Naples, but maybe other universities are similar. Some stuff I've heard that it is similar. So let's go to the first thing that I love about Italian university is actually how surprised I was for the level of professors, both the educational level, how much they do, how, many, how much research they have, where they were studying and their level of English. I was very surprised of the high level of English. I was studying in English, so that's why I'm talking about this. And in comparison to Poland and to Spain, where I was both studying in English, the level was the highest from all of the countries. And in Spain, I was actually on my Erasmus and I was studying in private school, so I would expect the level a little bit higher. However, it was not. In Italy, it was the highest level of both the level of the professors and like the knowledge of the topic and the English. So what I can tell you about professors, I was very surprised that they were from very, very good universities, Yale, Oxford, MIT, Berkeley. So they were from top, top, top universities. And as well, they were, most of them were not only teachers at my university, but also in some very good universities in Italy, like Bocconi, for example. And as well, I had professors with quite important researches for economics and finance. And then a few of them had also their own books and a huge here I realized that actually one of my friends who studied in Bocconi was learning from one of my teacher's book. So yeah, they are quite, let's say, important people in the economic and financial world, which I was very, very surprised. Maybe I was lucky. It was as well my research to, to get to university like this, but I was very surprised about it. Now what I hated about Italian University was the organization. From the day one, seriously, not even the day one, the organization of how you apply for university, how do you get the information, like the best university in that case was Bologna, which had like super all the information about how you're going to be given the points, how is the process, what is the deadline, where you're going to get the answer, everything. And everything was public as well, so you could have seen where you ranked in the ranking with our, all the other people. Another one that was like quite good was Padova and then Milan, Rome and Naples, they were all messed up. In Milan and Rome I had an interview, so let's say that's more structured as well. However, um, all of this organization was already very bad, but let's say, sorry to eat all the Italy, but let's say Italy is not the best organized country in the world. Uh, however, it works, it works quite well. I managed to do a lot of stuff in Italy. So let's say it's feasible, it's okay. However, organization at university is quite, quite, quite low. I didn't know where are my classes until the day of arrival to the university of the first day of my classes. I didn't know my schedule. I didn't know most of the time the when it's going to be my exam, like until one week before my exams. I just knew when is the exam week and then and they were telling me one day before, uh, one week before when exactly the exam is going to be. And in my case, I had all exams in one week. So in five days, I would have four exams. So let's say it's quite important information when the exam is, because you either have one day to prepare in the week of exam or four days to prepare for on the week of exam. So quite important information, but obviously don't expect too much, let's say, from the organizational part. Uh, let's go back to things that I really liked about. They were prices. I know that for Italians, it may not be exactly the same, but for foreign students, public universities in Italy, they are quite cheap. I was paying about 400, 450 euros per year, which was less than what I was paying in Poland. And because in Poland, I was paying about more than 500 euros per year. It was 250, 200, 250, 300 euros per semester. So at the end, 450 was less than what I was paying in Poland. In Poland, it was because I was studying English. You normally don't pay for studying in Poland. However, if you study in English, the prices are higher. And in Italy, I had a normal price according to the country I was coming from. So if you are an Italian, you know it probably, but just for the curiosity for foreign people, you will get the price of the university based on the income of your family. And if you are a foreign student, you will probably get the prices based on the average income of your country and they somehow calculated and it's the same for the whole country or for few countries from the same, let's say, range of things. So I would assume, let's say, German people would pay more than Polish people because they are richer country and gain more money. It's kind of like with the Erasmus how it works. Uh, but for me, the price was uh, quite nice and I couldn't complain from that part. So that was the thing that I liked about the university a lot. A thing that I didn't like too much was that I was on an English course 
that from how it was organized, I could tell that it was made for Italians. A lot of stuff was in Italian, a lot of things were prepared only like on a basic level of um, English, let's say. So for example, we have classes, all classes in English that I cannot say that it was prepared bad. It was all good, all in English, no Italian in that case. But we had to do two additional activities from which actually only two were available in English. Uh, or I even think maybe one and then another one would be Italian course that was considered as additional activity. If you didn't know Italian, you are not having any options or, okay, no, sorry, you could you had options because you could have done a language certificate or you could have done GMAT or which is like a very popular exam that you do on a financial economic studies. You could have done, what was it? Uh, uh, internship, but the internship problem was that it has to be approved. So actually, I don't know anybody who had the internship approved by the university. And you could have gone for the summer school, but let's say not everybody can go for the summer school. It's connected more to your achievements and what you want to do. And if you want to be a PhD student, not really every person can go. It's not a thing that you just sign and go. So let's say it's already more difficult. So these are the options that could have been in English. Plus one thing, like one class that was actually in English, and then the Italian course. If you didn't want to do Italian course or if you didn't like the class you, you wanted to do, you didn't have any other options. And also the GMAT and language certificate, they are paid options. So in my opinion, not the best organization on that side. I was lucky enough that I was speaking Italian and I took two courses in Italian and it worked perfectly for me. However, I know that people who didn't speak Italian, they had much more problems than, uh, than me. So yeah, that was very unorganized. And I've heard that it's quite, that it happens quite a lot. So uh, that's why I mentioned that point as a thing that I didn't really like. I think that it's a huge plus of the Italian university was big preparation for PhD. Uh, I don't know if that was only my studies because my studies were quite focused on going to PhD, even if I think that only two people went, like one is still uh, in the process of application and one guy went on a PhD. And when we were talking one day in a class from out of about 60 people, five people said that they want to go for a PhD. However, let's skip this part. My my major was mostly preparing preparation for PhD. Uh, I didn't know it before coming because I'm not interested in PhD at all. But yeah, you could feel it that it was much more advanced. It was a little bit different than one I had at normal university. It was more PhD related than work related, even if we had an amazing class, amazing workshops with KPMG and Banca d'Italia, which were about banking regulations. And I think that it was one of the best classes we had. So you got this as well, uh, which was quite nice. Uh, so I cannot say that it was only PhD focused, but yeah, it was quite good PhD preparation. So that's the thing that I think it's a huge class of the university in Italy. On the other hand, there was a lot of stuff that was very theoretical and not a lot of computer usage. Also the fact that we didn't have like computer class. I know that you, supposed to think that every student has a computer, uh, blah, 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 but not every student have a laptop that they can bring to the university, that they don't need to charge it, and they have a powerful laptop that will handle many different programs. So I think that that was a little bit as well lack of organization, that we didn't have a huge classroom where we could all work in a university computers, because it was not a private university, so I don't know why they assume that we will have computers. On the other hand, I know that not a lot of people do anything on the public universities with computers, so I was quite lucky to have it. However, it was still little. In comparison to my Polish studies and my studies in Spain, it was seriously little. We had basically like two classes maybe where we were using computer out of 14, 15, maybe 17. I don't really know how many classes I took, a lot. <laughs> However, yeah, this is the thing that, that was a huge minus and theoretical part. Maybe in economics is fine, but in finance you have to do exercises, you have to do more study cases than only theoretical part uh, so for me it was quite difficult and it's for me it's a huge minus uh, big plus it's an opportunity for scholarships that's what i loved i think it's a good thing that every student has an opportunity for scholarship and there are many many different scholarships for foreign students for italian students based on your income based on your grades some type of prices because of something there were like also female scholarships so it's quite nice this kpmg stuff was also a let's say a contest you could win the scholarship as well i think about 2k so quite nice so there are a lot of scholarships opportunities which are obviously profitable for students to develop their skills or be able to go to university or maybe go somewhere buy additional resources or something just nice just quite cool and i think it's a very very italian thing one of my friends was telling me on my on erasmus already about the scholarship uh, opportunities and it was not only in naples that but i can tell you for sure every italian university had tons of scholarship opportunities
thing that I didn't like is that you have endless number of times you can retake exam and you actually have to accept the grade. So if you get a grade, it's not put anywhere. It's just like emailed to you or uh, given to you in any other way. And then it has to be like accepted in a system by your professor. You have to come, you have to sign it, whatever, all the process, you have to accept the grade. The grade is not accepted automatically. That's the thing that I don't think that happens anywhere in the world. And you can retake exam without any payments, without any additional thing that just coming to the exam, maybe registering, sorry, you have to also register for exams. That's what you do in Italy. I didn't have to because we had English studies and they just assumed that everybody would come to the exam. Uh, but normally you have to register for exam. So without anything else than registration, you just could do how many times you want it and in my opinion it's a huge con of what you do because it doesn't allow you to have the motivation learn how to uh, stick to deadlines you just pick like two exams out of five for the semester which in my opinion is little people graduate late it's just like lazy way of thinking i don't know also another thing that i really really didn't like was like the pressure on the grades the pressure of like having super hard grades retaking exams because you got for example 24 and 24 out of 30 is worst grade ever it's not it's quite a good grade i personally graduated with the average of 25 and it was one of the worst averages so just imagine but i graduated in july 2021 and i know people who studied with me and that was like the first uh, moment that you could graduate i know people who studied with me who haven't graduated yet and probably will not graduate in march so because of many different reasons but one of the reasons is because of retaking exams retaking exams or not coming for the exam and having to retake it which for me it's a very very big minus for italian universities i didn't like it i think it's mm, very unmotivational it's very unrealistic in comparison to what happens in the workplace and i understand the importance of grade uh, i talk about it as well in a video about differences between Polish and Italian universities that you can see somewhere here but for sure for me it's a huge con and for me it's a thing that I hated 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 all the pressure for the grades was the worst pressure I ever had in my whole life like not even like primary school middle school high school never at Italian university that was the most pressure I had for the grades getting 18 was like basically not passing and 18 is the passing point I don't know how many like the countless number of people I met before Italy who would just want to pass the exam and then in Italy 18 was like or 20 or anything like under 27 was unacceptable so yeah just so you know <laughs> pretty cool thing that I liked was the opportunity to go for Erasmus with quite a good scholarship and the double degree opportunities in my university I don't know if that was only the English studies but uh, there were two or three places where you could go for double degree and so basically a master's degree you would do first year in Naples and second year somewhere and you would graduate in the place you went for your Erasmus, let's say. That way you have two diplomas, and I have to say that both of the universities that were uh, that were given as a double degree were much better than Naples in the ranking, so I would say it's a huge opportunity for people who care about this stuff, who maybe want to try something else after first year. It was quite cool, I never heard about this before, that you can do a double degree in different country, because one of them was Lisbon, another one was Switzerland, so that was quite nice. I've heard about double degrees inside the same university. Yes, that one I know that exists in Poland, in Spain, I don't know, but in Italy you could have done on my university double degree with different country and in on much more higher ranked university that I truly truly hated like seriously hated at Italian university was this difference between the respect to the professor and disrespect to the students starting with like I'm not like I'm not saying that you can like you should not respect the professors I think you should but on the same hand I think we are both adults we are already in master studies we already have our bachelor's degree some of us want to do a PhD we are about to get master's degree let's say the professor yes they are much more important than us but I don't feel like they should be like I'm the most important person in the world I'm the god of this university whatever I just really really hate this type of feeling and it was not like one professor that was the best like all of the professors and then it's 
it's even okay, be like this, but don't disrespect students. I had a professor who was yelling to us instead of be quiet, he was yelling shut up, which in my opinion is unacceptable. I had uh, situations like, as I told you, no respect for deadlines, no respect for organization. Students were disinformed. We have like no information about this stuff. They didn't know when their exams are. The professor would not help us with finding out when the exams are. They will not help us with changing the schedule, whatever. Like. We sometimes had the situation when we had a lot of classes that were like pushed somewhere to the late hours or there would be like three hours of the same class in the same day after another three hours of another class, which was quite exhausting. And we tried to push it between the days. Obviously, no, no reason to do it because the professors have their own schedule and I, I totally respect it. But like none of the professors, like I'm saying none. <laughs> so it was quite difficult for me to handle the difference between how we should respect the professors and how disrespected we are. Because if they respect us, and not only professors, like university overall, if they respect us, we respect them. For me, it's normal. But if they don't respect us and we should see them as gods, for me, this is a problem. And I saw it a lot in the Italian university. And I'm this type of person who is very like, tell me to do it, I'm not going to do it. Uh, obviously, I work on it, it depends on the situation, like uh, at the workplace or at the university, I try not to do it. But I had a situation at the university that I was yelled by my colleagues, like my, my friends from university about the situation. So I will just describe you uh, this story. Basically, there was a group of people at my class that were talking a lot between each other. And one day one professor got mad. He said a few times, be quiet, be quiet. Then he finished writing something on the blackboard. And then he went to the bathroom to clean the hands as he always did after the class. We were all sitting and writing what was on the, on the blackboard. And he came back to the class and he said, the class is over, you can go home. And I said to the professor, as the only person, everybody were like, quiet, quiet, like, shh, shh, no, nobody said anything. And me as an only person, I said with a normal voice, like, but we are writing what you wrote on, um, on the blackboard. And he answered to me, everything is in a book, you don't have to write it. In my head, obviously, I could have said it, but I didn't. I, I, I bit it myself in a tongue. I, in my head, I said, like, if it's in a book, why do I even bother being here? <laughs> but obviously, I didn't. And then after the class, he left. And after we stopped writing, Two or three people came to me and they were like, Magda, you cannot speak like this to the professor. You can't. If the professor is angry, you just shut up. You just sit down and you write or like you put your head down. You don't even look at the professor because he may fail you on the exam. And that's the excess of the... For me, I was just like, no, the professor cannot fail me because I said that I'm sitting on a class. I'm writing what he wrote on a blackboard. And I said to him that I am writing what he wrote on the blackboard. <laughs> so I don't think it's possible that the professor can fail you. And if he does, if he would fail me, he didn't. He didn't. Like, I don't even think he knew my name, to be honest. He didn't fail me. But if he would fail me, he would have much more bigger issues. Like, I don't know how Italian University would handle it. But you just bring the exam. You go to the more important professor or to the secretary or whoever at the university. You shall please show where I made the mistakes. Please show me the level of what is the passing level. Passed, failed, okay. You know, uh, they are easy ways to handle it. So I don't think that professors should fail you just because you said something to them or just because they don't like your face. That's the way of like the things that I really, really didn't like. Like it was one of the things that was itching me a lot. Um, so yeah. A uh, thing that is quite nice on, uh, on Italian University is that there is no obligation to attend the classes. So you can go, you don't have to go, you may just have the book or maybe slides from the professor and that's the way you want to study, perfect. If you prefer to go to the lecture, also perfect, you can do it. I think nobody can uh, like make you come to the classes, which is nice because you have your freedom of how you prefer to study. Some people prefer to study at home or at library with their own research, their own uh, stuff, and some people prefer to go to the lecture, listen, make notes and study from this, which is quite cool. And I didn't have that opportunity neither in Spain nor in Poland, both of the places I had the somehow restrictions on how many classes I should be on, like the, the frequency, mm, the frequency, frequency, I don't know how you say it, how much you are on the classes. <laughs> uh, so in Poland, it was 90%. In Spain, I had 70%. So in Italy with freedom, uh, I ended up going always, but with the freedom you can, you can just show up on the on the exam and that's the first moment you see the professor. Two last things that I didn't really like is like again with uh, with the lack of organization, the freedom and whatever, it's like you can graduate whenever you want to, you can study as long as you want to, you can retake exams as long as you want to. For me this is the lack of motivation. And another thing that I didn't like, uh, the last one, is that there was no support for like uh, non-Italian students so we were really 
low supported we had to go to main secretaria most of the times even if we have our own secretaria who was speaking english we had to go to the main secretaria where no one was speaking english they were speaking only italian and for me it was not a problem i spoke italian like it was actually it was a problem because many my, like i knew italian but I had to learn, let's say, the wording that I have to use with secretaria, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes they were not very easy to understand as well. They were not making it easy to understand because they would speak fast. Obviously, I didn't knew in the first month that I came, I didn't knew Italian because I learned it over there. So first few months were much more difficult than, for example, when I was doing my documents for uh, thesis. My documents for thesis, super easy. I was already fluent in Italian and I could have done it like, like this. I would just go to secretaria and it was super easy. At the beginning, it was quite harder, but imagine you don't know Italian and you have no interest in learning it. That's quite difficult. And let's end up this video with um, with few more positive sides of the of Italian university. So definitely, if we speak about languages, you have an opportunity to learn Italian. Like they provide courses and also everything is in Italian and you have a lot of Italian colleagues. So there is an opportunity to learn Italian. That's how I learned Italian. And I think that's it amazing opportunity here in Luxembourg. I'm now living in Luxembourg. It's not that easy for me to learn French, mostly because I don't have anybody to speak French with. So I have no motivation to learn French, but I know I will. <laughs> One day I will. This is the, the goal for maybe 2022. We'll see. Maybe 2023. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. One day. However, in Italy, that was not a problem. I had so many Italian contact with Italian that it was just easier for me to learn. Another thing that you will see is like that the universities are mostly in the city center. So you may live very close to the university. If you are lucky enough, that's going to be in a city center and they're going to be quite easy accessible. So this is quite nice for Italian universities as well. So yeah, that would be it for today. Let me know in the comments down below what you agree with or you don't agree or what are your expectations for your studies abroad in Italy. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. That helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm so this video will reach more people. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my channel. I talk a lot about studying abroad, where you've exchanged, Erasmus, my life abroad, currently in Luxembourg, but I have a lot of videos about Spain, Italy, and US as well. So if you enjoyed this type of topic, subscribe to my channel so you will not miss any of my future videos. And here I leave you the video about differences between Polish and Italian university and the study abroad playlist. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you in another video.